Republik Demokratik Timur Leste adalah sebuah negara pulau di Asia Tenggara dengan populasi penduduknya mencapai 1,4 juta orang. Negara tetangga Indonesia ini mendapatkan kemerdekaannya pada 20 Mei 2002 setelah mayoritas penduduk memilih menjadi negara sendiri. Sebelum merdeka, Timur Leste merupakan provinsi termuda di Indonesia yang bernama Timor Timur. Pada 30 Agustus 1999, warga Timor Timur mengadakan jajak pendapat atau referendum untuk memilih lepas atau tetap di Indonesia. Setelah 21 tahun merdeka, beginilah wajah Timor Leste. Timor Leste kini dipimpin Jose Ramos Horta, Pria kelahiran 26 Desember 1949 ini kembali terpilih menjadi Presiden Timor Leste untuk periode 2022-2027, setelah sebelumnya menjabat Presiden pada periode 2007-2012. Pada 2008, Presiden Ramos Horta selamat dari upaya pembunuhan yang dilakukan oleh anggota kelompok militer pemberontak. Ramos Horta menuding jurnalis Indonesia Desi Anwar membantu tokoh pemberontak dalam insiden serangan terhadap dirinya. Bahkan Ramos Horta sempat mengancam akan mengangkat masalah ini ke Dewan Keamanan PBB. Inside with Desi Anwar kali ini berada di Dili Timor Leste. Ini adalah sebuah negara yang termuda di abad ke-21 ini setelah meraih kemerdekaannya dari Indonesia pada tahun 2002. Dan terus terang terakhir saya berada di sini adalah pada tahun 1991 yang tentu saja saat itu Timor Timur namanya itu merupakan provinsi atau bagian dari Indonesia saat Indonesia menganeksasi daerah ini ketika Portugal meninggalkan jajahannya. Nah, kita sekarang berada di sini untuk melihat bagaimana kemajuan Timor Leste setelah 21 tahun merdeka dan tentu saja lebih penting lagi bagaimana hubungan antara Indonesia dan juga Timor Leste. Kita akan bertemu dengan Presiden Timor Leste saat ini yaitu Presiden Jose Ramos Horta. Good morning. Selamat pagi. El Presidente Jose Ramos. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. Selamat datang di Dili. Iya, terima di kasih banyak. Saya kantor. <laughs> Bahasa Indonesianya masih bagus sekali. Sedikit sedikit. Sedikit sedikit. Oke. Okay. Thank you for welcoming me and it's a big honor. Pleasure. It's a great pleasure. Of course, I mean, we've known each other for I mean, let's be honest, we've known each other for quite a long We've time. We've aged almost together. We've aged almost together <laughs> and it's wonderful for me to be here literally for the first time since I came here in 1991. Different times, different days, different history obviously. But this is an interesting building. It's a gallery and it's your office. Maybe you could you yeah. know, uh, when, tell uh, us a little bit when, about um, I left office in 2012 by law. Mm. Uh, the government uh, gave to every former president and prime minister and speaker an official residence. Of course, this was very run down. I fixed it uh, myself. And uh, be, uh, to be an official residence, but because I don't need for an official residence, uh, for a residence, I have a private residence, yeah. uh, I converted it, this into an office to continue my international, domestic and international activities. And then uh, two years ago, I thought about putting together all the pictures, documents mm-hmm. I have uh, to be a gallery, which I call Living uh, Memory. Yeah, I saw uh, Galeria Memoria Viva. Viva. Yeah. Okay, so maybe let's let's come in and so, maybe you yeah. can show us a little bit oh, around okay. so, what's so unique yeah. about this gallery. And uh, I start uh, probably with uh, this poster here, random selection mm-hmm. of photos of children suffering extreme poverty mm-hmm. around the world. No, Why? Why no would you put specific. it? And uh, as you say here, see here I say, So we do not forget the children. Uh, 
So someone walk here, I walk here in the morning. This is what reminds me, reminds mm -hmm. hopefully everyone. And then I had an agreement with UNICEF before I became uh, president again to campaign uh, nationally and internationally for children's rights, for mothers, uh, uh, nutrition as well. No? Cannot only pay attention to the poor, poor children, uh, pay attention to mm -hmm. mothers, particularly pregnant, ma pregnant mothers and after they deliver their child. So this is a cause that you're yes, very much yes, uh, so passionate yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. But it also reflects the history of Timor-Leste itself. Yes, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a pictorial, particular pictorial history of uh, Timor-Leste. Now, I'd like to share with the audience, because I still remember the first time we met each other. It was outside of Indonesia. This is back in 1999, before Yes. Uh, Tim East Timor then became yes, independent and I still remember when I met you, it was in Hawaii, in do, Hawaii do you remember? And I came up and then I said, introduce myself, I'm from Indonesia with RCTI then and then you were like, I yeah. don't like anything <laughs> to do with Indonesia. Yeah, yeah. I still remember that. Yeah. You didn't like anything to do with Indonesia. Uh, and so. Tell me, was your sentiment, did you really, I mean, what, yeah. did you have so much dislike for Indonesia no, then? Actually, you know? maybe. Because I was very struck by that. Yeah. I was like, okay. No, that probably was uh, your perception because uh, at the UN, New York, I always got along well with the entire Indonesian mission. They were always polite, friendly. Mm -hmm. I even became friends with Ali Alatas in New York. And so you got uh, on with the foreign minister yeah, Ali Alata, the late foreign mm -hmm. minister, outstanding diplomat for Indonesia. You're a figure like yours, you, you know, for yeah. Indonesia, particularly the Indonesian government, the new order, you were like a headache, you know, his yeah. Ramos Horta yeah. saying bad things about yeah. Indonesia. Yeah. And yeah. everywhere I went with yeah. him, I yeah. used to travel a lot with President Suharto, uh, there would be demonstrators yeah, outside, yeah. you know, Free East yeah. Timor and... Yeah, that's correct. So, that, that's true. <laughs> Ali, Ali Alata uh, uh, once called me publicly and he said, Ramos Horta is an unemployed agitator. Unemployed agitator. Is that an accurate description? <laughs> yeah, it was accurate that description because I, I didn't have a paid job <laughs> and I was always agitating for Timor. But uh, he was all very... Uh, very charming and uh, I sat with him when he, he was leaving for Jakarta to be the foreign minister. I was sitting with him uh, at the UN delegates lounge mm -hmm. and I told him, Ambassador, please, my mother is still in Timor-Leste. They don't uh, let her leave the country. Mm -hmm. We want her to leave the country. And he said like this, I don't know why they want to keep this old lady there. <laughs> and uh, so he came to T Jakarta for a minute, and one day he came to Timor-Leste and met with uh, my mother. Uh, soon after, she was able to leave. Okay. Very good man. Ali Alantas, I have only the best memories of him. Uh, and, uh, but those were the years you, you know, struggled uh, to have independence, obviously. Yes, yes, yes. So what was that sentiment so, so like? It was very unusual, because one thing maybe you can say, Indonesian diplomats are of the highest caliber. Mm -hmm. They are civilians, they are diplomats. Even in the face of someone who always attacking them, when they see me, they greet. I even, a number of times, I went to lunch with uh, some Indonesian diplomat. Uh, so they knew their job. Uh, they, we would say, we talk with, with the enemy as mm -hmm. well. And I had a great relationship with them. It shows their more civilized uh, fashion. Unlike some <laughs> other situations in New York that I witnessed, uh, where the opposing sides uh, would uh, really very aggressively, right there in the corridors of the UN, you know, insulting, shouting, and mm -hmm. sometimes physical uh, fighting. Mm -hmm. But was there anybody that you could particularly dislike in those days? I mean, that you, you know, you had to 
uh, obviously in, in the in Indonesia then uh, because it was uh, well uh, obviously uh, I always say the problem with uh, the Timor Leste is at the time was the military abuse of power mm -hmm. on our side Timor Leste starting fr from day one the policy convey to everyone we are not fighting the Indonesian people so in our speeches in our writings we never demonize Indonesian people as people or Indonesian uh, re main religion which is Islam never you would have heard us demonizing Islam uh, mm -hmm. who we were fighting well the military yeah that's uh, yeah. And so that, that was yeah. the main bone yeah. of contention. Yeah. And because of that, when independence came, uh, time for reconciliation, it was uh, absolutely 100% welcome by the people. Okay. Well, let, let's continue. I mean, let's, just very quickly, maybe. Okay. This is yes. Max Tal. Mm -hmm. I titled Max Forever. Great journalist who filmed the Santa Cruz massacre. Yeah, that was in '91. In, uh, th yes, I 91. think I came a few months before that. Before the it, Santa yeah. Cruz massacre, I remember. That was the turning point that really made Indonesia seem bad yeah. in the international yeah. light. And they woke up mm -hmm. people in Indonesia itself, in terms of uh, even in the government, Ali Alatas and the others, they were yeah. horrified. Yeah. And, but then, yeah. of course, the the media then it was yeah, censor then, you know, yeah. censorship. Not yeah. many Indonesians knew what was no, going yes, on. Yeah, yeah. That it was yeah. a you know it's a an yeah. area that was com close yeah. to us yeah. basically. Yeah. So these are more recent uh, photos. These are Santa Cruz. Uh, uh, some pictures of Santa Cruz. These are some uh, yeah. random pictures of the UN here already past. Uh, but you really you know, garnered the international attention on East Timor. Yeah. How how was it? What you know? Uh, partly. Well, look. This is the Alia Latas. In the why? negotiations with Secretary General Kofi Annan, Annan and the Portuguese Foreign Minister. I I, I think I, I met. Yeah, him you here. met him, yes. and I'm sure. I said, God, Habib is really uh, accurate. We have so rocks everywhere. <laughs> and uh, wherever you go, there are rocks everywhere. So. Uh, but, so, but you never met him, that's... Uh... No. the Nobel Peace Prize, which is back in 1996, and you shared the prize with Bishop, Bishop Bello. Bello. Yeah. And uh, uh, the, yeah. this is from the Weekend Australian East Timor Freedom Fighters Win yeah. Nobel. What, tell me, just was this something that you expected? Were you no, surprised? No, no, no. Did it change anything in your cause then? Uh, you know, obviously, whatever I do, uh, speaking out for people around the world. Uh, now, for instance, for Myanmar, I don't expect anything in return mm -hmm. except the happiness, the consolation if Myanmar win back its uh, freedom. But I have to say, you know, this man here, Habibi. Oh, yeah, that so maybe we can take a closer. This is a picture. This is 1998 when President Suharto stepped down. By yes. did you ever meet President? No, I Suharto? never met either Suharto or Habibi. The only person of any significance I met at the time was Ali Alatas, and uh, and uh, became friends since uh, 98, 99. 1998 and 99 with uh, Lord Banjaitan. By pure chance, mm -hmm. I went to give a lecture at American University in Washington. Lord, Bank Lord was studying doing a master's degree at the National Defense University in Washington. His wife also mm -hmm. studying. 
he came to my talk, and uh, very few people, maybe 40 people, uh, he was the only Asian-looking person I saw in the room. After that, he came to greet me, you see, like, <laughs> Indonesians are all very different, you know. It's not like, uh, I don't mention other uh, group names. He came to greet me. He was here with the invading force in 75. He came in two, three missions. He was Copasus. And he greeted me very politely and invited me uh, to lunch. Okay. And how in did his, you feel about it? In their home. I first hesitated, and, uh, but then I, I went along, and we became uh, in touch since uh, then. Uh, when, uh, but one thing uh, uh, Lourdes said that uh, I think is important, he said, the old generation of military leaders in Indonesia will not change mm. position on East Timor. East Timor yeah. And then I asked him, and would, would they change when you become a leader? He said, no comment. <laughs> a, military, very disciplined, but the fact that he said no comment was already indicative that he wasn't in agreement with the policies. Because he could have said, uh, no, we will maintain the same position. You know, but he said no comment. Okay, so 98 reformasi president who had to step down, vice president Habibi became president. You, and you never met him. Never met Habibi. But, but uh, you know, the persons and persons who really shaped Habibi's mind was uh, Dewey, uh, your sister, uh, a great intellect, a uh, great mind, uh, working with Habibi. And, uh, and Abibi, and uh, your sister, but particularly Abibi, because he's no, he was the president. The president exactly. I think it was he, him. He was the one who made the decision. Not fully recognized in Indonesia, but we did recognize him. And me, as a leader of the country, Nobel laureate, I would say, if the Nobel Committee uh, would have uh, made a decision, should have made a decision then, to give the award to uh, Habib. Not only because of Timor-Leste, but because of Indonesia. You know, he came in in a very difficult circumstance for Indonesia. Weak leader, because he was not yeah. elected. And what, if we got our freedom of the press under his presidency, exactly. and, uh, Indonesia uh, became a democracy. And the democracy continued. Uh, there was no rollback with him and uh, no rollback with Timor-Leste, you forge ahead with resolving the problem. I remember I was in Washington, in uh, Atlanta, I was in Atlanta. I, uh, I visited friends in CNN, in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. They invited me, so I went. And uh, that was uh, around that time Habibi made a, a speech. Uh, in 98, he said, because they called me, Jose, Jose, come, uh, Indonesian president speaking. <laughs> and uh, so I went to the room. Habibi was addressing a group of businessmen and governors of the provinces. He said, by next year, I want to see the East Timor problem resolved. That place has nothing. It has only rocks. <laughs> and that's how he dismissed it. He has only rocks. <laughs> and I couldn't help laughing. And that's what, how it happened, you know. So I was there in CNN headquarters, and uh, many years later, you know, traveling in Timor, I said, God, Habibi is really uh, accurate. We have so rocks everywhere in this country. <laughs> and uh, wherever you go, there are rocks everywhere. So. Uh, but, so but you never met him. That's, uh, no, you, no. You never got a chance? You, never, you... never had a chance. Because I, Shanana was luckier. Shanana mm -hmm. met him a number of times. When he was very sick, dying, mm -hmm. Shanana went to visit, uh, visit him, and there was a very moving video mm -hmm. of uh, Shanana kissing uh, Habibi's forehead and uh, of him embracing uh, Shanana. Okay. Uh, there is a bridge here, the President Habibi. Bridge. Yes, and then. So this, the, he's a hero. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And then Shanana at the, 
at the 20th anniversary of the referendum in 2019. Uh, before that, obviously, but the 20th anniversary, we unveil the park and the bridge. It's called Habibi Bridge and Park. Uh, it is in honor of Habibi. And Shannon asked me to be the one signing the inauguration of the plaque because of my uh, relationship with the diplomatic situation. But if you had met him, what would you have said to him? Oh, had I met him, I would have said, uh, Papa President, you are a hero, you are a Democrat, you are the one who oversaw the change in Indonesia and Timor-Leste. A bit like Gorbachev, uh, like Mandela, Frederick de Klerk in South Africa a leader who, with vision, with courage, you know, now is the time to change. And uh, change for much better. Indonesia today, one of the most prosperous countries in the region, leading economy in the world, member of G20, and with exceptional relations with Timor-Leste. <laughs> you know, Indonesia found in independent Timor-Leste uh, a friend. And let me tell you, for in the beginning of our independence, for a few years, uh, U.S. Congress was still imposing sanctions on, in, on TNI. Mm -hmm. I was the one who went to New York, Washington, met with friends in the Congress, tell them, please, it is time to lift the sanction on TNI. Uh, because I, I saw the problems in Ambon, Kalimantan, mm -hmm. where the Indonesian Navy was struggling to carry people. I was even criticized, if you uh, Google, you will find an editorial in Sydney Morning Herald saying it's a pity, a shame, that the Ramos are now lobbying uh, to lift sanctions on uh, TNI. Uh, and I was right. And TNI uh, also evolved, you know, mm -hmm. uh, tremendously. Yeah. Well, let's go to the next room because I think Symbolon and Adam, Adam Damiri, uh, uh, he and Shannon greeted each other with a big hug, like old friends. And then later I asked Shannon, who was that guy you uh, gave a big hug? Oh, he was the one who captured me. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> yeah. Kita lanjutkan insight with Desi Anwar kali ini langsung dari Dili Timor Leste. Saya ditemani oleh Presiden Jose Ramos Horta. Dan kini Timor Leste sudah lebih dari 20 tahun ya, 21 tahun merdeka. Dan bagaimana khususnya hubungan antara Indonesia dan Timor Leste dan bagaimana juga ya keadaan baik ekonomi, sosial dari Timor Leste itu sendiri. President Ramos Horta, you have been giving me a very, very interesting and comprehensive history about uh, Timor-Leste and also the relationship that, um, well, you had in those days between Timor-Leste and Indonesia. But now 21 years of independence. I mean, when you fought for independence, self-determination, I'm sure you had an, an, an ideal of what your country would look like. 21 years on and you, this is the second time you're president. Is it, I mean, close to the ideal? How far is it? Are you on the right track? We have made uh, impressive uh, gains. Of course, there's always desire to do better, more. Always frustration that we haven't done more and better. But I always look at things in perspective. A, uh, I wasn't born yesterday, and uh, I have traveled all over the world, mm -hmm. at least 135 countries. 
Of course, some I traveled there repeatedly, 10, 20 times. Uh, but total, 135, including uh, in Africa, Latin America, Asia. I've been in Bosnia, uh, um, in the Middle East, mm. Israel, uh, Palestine, and, and many of the Arab countries, uh, Central America, etc., etc. And uh, these countries that have been independent 50 years, 100 years, um, some didn't go through wars, mm -hmm. uh, and yet uh, undeveloped. Compared with Timor Leste, we are far better than many countries. Even if we look at the uh, UN Human Index mm -hmm. report, our life expectancy today is higher than uh, of uh, than every single country in Africa, south of Sahara, except South Africa and Cape Verde. Better than Kenya, Nigeria, mm -hmm. Zimbabwe, Zambia, and so on and so on. Um, even in the region, some indicators show us better than, for instance, Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Maybe not a fair or great comparison, but Myanmar has been in independence in 1949, extremely rich. Their uh, life expectancy is lower than Timor Leste. Their life expectancy is mm -hmm. 66 years, and Timor Leste is almost 70, 71. At independence, we had only 19, 20 medical doctors. Today, we have 1,200 plus doctors. We still have very few specialists. Uh, some doing a specialization in Indonesia, or have done a specialization in Indonesia, uh, some in uh, Nepal, Fiji, mm -hmm. India, Portugal, and so on. That is a good number. But uh, having good number of doctors and or nurses, but without infrastructures mm -hmm. uh, and continuing support to them, like we deploy doctors to every so-called suku, big village in Timor Leste. Everywhere, 440 plus sukus, there is a doctor there. Well, what sort of infrastructure did Indonesia leave that you could build on? Did, did Indonesia leave? A, 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 well, you know, like I noticed that when I came in '91, the roads were quite good. Yeah. But I did notice that the people were terribly poor. Yes. Uh, the yeah. Of course, you know, people. when Indonesia was here, there was war, there was conflict. And uh, Indonesia was here 24 years. The first few years you cannot count because there was years of war. Uh, but uh, no mm -hmm. matter, uh, the positive side of Indonesia's presence is many Timorese first time started in the late, in early 80s, by the hundreds went to study in Indonesian universities. Mm -hmm. So uh, many graduated there some doctors, some lawyers, uh, and so on. That is the body, and uh, some infrastructures. Uh, some of the infrastructure roads built by Indonesian army, uh, because this was the Indonesian mm -hmm. army engineer, survived uh, uh, at least 10, 15 years we, uh, without repair. they good quality. Uh, and uh, <coughs> of course, since then, uh, beginning in the 2007, 8, 9, we began a massive uh, program on infrastructures. Today you go from Dili to Baukau, the second mm -hmm. town, you can do in an hour and a half, two hours maximum. The road is impeccable. Electricity at Independence, it was only in Dili, none anywhere in the country. Uh, today we have uh, electricity that cover 96.1% of the territory. Okay. Yeah. But uh, it is an electricity that's far too expensive. We use mm -hmm. diesel. Uh, we hope to move to transition to gas, and uh, then we hope uh, to renewable. What else we have uh, done good? Very important, national reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Because not everyone supported independence, not all the violence that took place were by the Indonesian army, among Timorese, there's a lot mm -hmm. of uh, uh, harm done to each other. Even before Indonesian independence, we had a civil war that has nothing to do with Indonesia. 
Uh, then uh, between 75 and 78, uh, 77, 8, 78, within threatening ranks, a lot of violence. And, uh, so there's peace now, you can say, relative so, peace? So we had to reconcile um, healing the wounds among Timorese. Mm -hmm. And when, then we reached out to Indonesia. From day one, even before independence, uh, like October, 99, only a few weeks after uh, the violence here, Shanana and I, we went to Indonesia. Met with all the Indonesian military leaders you can think of. They were there at, uh, at the table. I saw their names, uh, Wiranto, Simbolong, uh, um, and Kiki Shianakri, and everyone. And uh, one thing that first struck me a lot was when uh, there was an Indonesian general, I think Simbolong, and Adam, Adam Damiri, uh, uh, he and Shannon greeted each other with a big hug, like old friends. And uh, later I asked Shannon, who was that guy you uh, gave a big hug? Oh, he was the one who captured me. <laughs> 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 That's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> yeah. uh, so um, uh, what happened in the war happened. Uh, nothing can be done about it. Indonesian side, both civilian military society, showed extraordinary uh, uh, strength of attitude, of character. Because uh, what Indonesia could have done out of spite, it didn't have to do anything directly harmful. It could have just turned its back on Timor Leste. You want to, to be independent? Go and yourself. Uh, and uh, no, they turned around and uh, from day one, Gus Dur came here, President Abdurrahman Wahid, in January 2000, before independence, with two Indonesian military aircraft bringing aid to Timor Leste. Mm -hmm. And Gus Dur went around to Indonesian universities and told them to accept Timorese students to, and to pay local Indonesian uh, fee which is cheaper. Mm -hmm. If we had to pay international Foreign, yeah. fee, no one would be able to go because people were so poor, we were so poor. So Indonesian support to Timor Leste is far beyond what mm -hmm. the statistics say. Uh, can you imagine thousands, thousands of Timorese students today uh, in Indonesia? If they were to pay $3,000 a year, uh, as a foreign student. Uh, no, it's too expensive. Uh, so and, and that still continues until it now, is the continuing, students? It is continuing. Uh, any single month, any month of the year, you will have 100,000 people from East Timor cross the border to West Timor, to Indonesia, mm. for holidays. In the Timor Leste, Timorese are the third or fourth largest number of visitors to Indonesia, four largest in the world. Mm -hmm. And of course, we don't spend much money like Singaporeans or Australians. Maybe a Timorese will spend $20 mm -hmm. a day, an Australian will spend 200 But uh, when you multiply $20, which I said the most conservative, by 100000 a month, is a lot of uh, remittance to Indonesia itself. But what about investments, trade investments? See, with in 70 Indonesia? To, uh, 70 percent of the trade goods is with Indonesia. 70 percent? 70 percent, yeah. We, uh, anything you think mm -hmm. of, uh, uh, equipment, uh, tractors, cars, uh, motorbikes, bicycles, uh, super me, uh, rice, uh, pop me, uh, anything. With all the resources we have, uh, and it should have come down to maximum 30% or even 20% poverty. Uh, it was much higher before, mm -hmm. but still. Child malnutrition, too high, unacceptable, uh, that our children should be uh, malnourished. We have a very high stunt. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my main yeah. uh, 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 frustration and uh, anger. In terms of investment, um, 
I noticed when I came out of the airport, you know, there's like Indonesians uh, like Pertamina and then the yeah. banks, Mandiri, Toyota. and also there's a yeah. Telkom Tel coming. Yeah. So how how uh, is Be that? What's Beri also. Uh, Toyota is Toyota Indonesia mm -hmm. that is here. Tell me the importance of yeah. uh, that kind of investment. Yeah. Is Indonesia one Extreme, of the largest? Extremely important and there should be more. President Widodo very interested. It is his idea to set up an industrial park, a joint industrial park along the border East and West Timor. Gubernur Victor of uh, NTT, he's no longer Gubernur, but uh, Indonesia, wants to do a free trade area between Waikusi and the, uh, Timor, uh, uh, West Timor. 10 kilometers into West Timor, 10 into Waikusi for a free trade area. Uh, <coughs> and Indonesian companies are competing more for mm -hmm. infrastructure, for instance, for the new Re renovated, expanded Delhi Airport, which is, I think, three hundred million dollar investment. It is uh, two Indonesian companies that won the contract, mm -hmm. uh, and I personally have uh, argued again and again that we must uh, favor Indonesian companies because they next door mm -hmm. uh, be uh, cheaper. Third, uh, any maintenance or repair or whatever, easy to call them uh, uh, here. Uh, and that, that is happening and uh, uh, will continue. And normal, we have very small economy next door. Indonesia is one of the, uh, uh, the largest regional economy, one of the biggest in the world. It's uh, normal, it's a bit like Mexico vis-a-vis -vis the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so. So it's, it's, it's amazing. Ex excellent here, relationship and uh, communication in Bahasa Indonesia remains very important here. Well, talking about Bahasa, I, I noticed that the young people here, they, even though the official language is what, the Portugal Tetum. and Tetum, yeah. but Bahasa Indonesia is still very yeah, much very, used. I mean, this common. is a, a working language. Uh, in the constitution, uh, Bahasa Indonesia and English are working languages more uh, Bahasa mm -hmm. Indonesia than English. Um, but uh, I think what the young people learn more uh, uh, Bahasa Indonesia is not in school, but uh, in uh, television. <laughs> television. And the Indonesian social media completely dominate uh, in Timor-Leste. But how is history, just out of curiosity, taught to the young generation, President? I mean, the the history of you yeah. know Indonesia changed, Indonesia in changed so much and you could say fast that uh, the younger generation doesn't think anything negative back and uh, when Timorese go to Indonesia uh, they are well treated well received the zero discrimination of uh, anyone mm -hmm. and uh, there's still a lot of intermarriage uh, officially uh, registered in our embassy about 4,000 Timorese university students mm -hmm. in Indonesia. Uh, not all in the best universities, you know, some they go to the private uh, universities because they don't have a very good grades to go to uh, Udayama or to Udayana or Zitat Indonesia or ITV, they go to the new private ones that they need numbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so most have positive views about Indonesia? Yeah, yes, and yeah. generally there is, um, uh, as I say, you know, um, because I meet with many of the young Timorese and they say even when some uh, Timorese overstay their visa, because, uh, you know, we are a bit careless, you know, uh, and then uh, uh, at the airport, immigration, they have problems. Uh, and uh, just the fact is East Timorese, the immigration people, just let them uh, let go them through. without uh, If it were a Filipino or <laughs> Thai, yeah, it would be, uh, it would be, be a different story. Yeah. Yeah. Let me go back to the challenges of I mean, East Timor with 1.3 million population. 1.4. Uh, 1 1.4 million and um, would you say the 
it's not it's still lower income right in terms of no. in the beginning obviously um, there was a lot of aid international aid coming to Timor Leste as well. well how has it been trying to get revenue from the country I mean the, yeah. one of the one of the interesting things obviously about this area is the the oil and gas and the shared with Australia for example how so how has the main revenue for East Timor yeah. been kind of developed and uh, we, the wealth of the country being managed I mean where we were blessed that uh, at independence we signed a first agreement with Australia for the joint development of uh, a gas oil field called Bayou Undan. Small but uh, big enough for us, uh, at the height of it was 140,000 barrels a day of light crude. And what we did it was to create a sovereign fund whereby uh, all the revenues go to the sovereign fund, not directly to the, uh, to the budget. treasure. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so it is extremely carefully managed. How much was it? Uh, 140,000 barrels a day. Uh, and in dollar term, which uh, uh, in uh, in money term, it was like uh, more than a billion, two billion, three billion dollars a year. Uh, depends on hmm, the fluctuation on of the oil price and gas price. And unlike some countries, oil producing, gas producing countries in the world that didn't have a sovereign fund, and the money would go directly to the government. When it would be spent. And uh, can be well used or can be spent, can be wasted, etc. In our case, it was st uh, strictly carefully uh, invested. S in the last 10 years, we changed the law to allow for diversification of our uh, sovereign fund investments. So we invest the, the 60% in US Treasury bonds, mm -hmm. very low interest. 40%, several billion dollars, we invested in international market, like uh, equities. Mm -hmm. In the last 10 years, we have uh, uh, received uh, profits, uh, revenues of about 8 to 9% return. That's the highest anyone can think of when you invest talk, yeah, talk in the financial rate. market. Normally, 3 4%. Uh, and this is being used for what, uh, mainly? Roads, because our friend, the donors, not one, has uh, helped us with uh, uh, roads. Electricity, as I mentioned, 96.1%, 100% our finance, more than a billion dollars now. Uh, so all the roads, network, the bridges, most mm -hmm. of it, ours. European Union financed some bridges, Japan financed some uh, kilometers of, uh, of uh, roads uh, almost 20 years ago at the beginning of independence. But so far, all the major infrastructures, electricity, uh, has been our own financing. We are 100% self-financing of our national budget. We still have uh, generous uh, mm -hmm. international support, about $200 million a year uh, for a budget that is this next year coming will be $1.6 billion. Okay. So we have uh, $200 million, but uh, that is not for budget support. It's for programs mm -hmm. that are managed directly by the donors or with the UN. We don't have any involvement in the management. Uh, we, our involvement is uh, identify the priorities. So we have not done too bad, but, but we have uh, failed in uh, further reducing extreme poverty. Still too high. Mm -hmm. With all the resources we have, uh, it should have uh, come down to maximum 30% or even 20% poverty. Uh, it was much higher before, mm -hmm. but still, child malnutrition, too high, unacceptable. 
that our children should be uh, malnourished. We have a very high stunt. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my main yeah. uh, 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 frustration and uh, anguish. What are you doing about it with mal particularly yeah, stunting? The, uh, is it, yeah, is the problem, problem is that um, it is not just a question of money. If it were a question of money, yeah, let's pour money into it. The question is management, is planning, management, mm. execution. Uh, we fight because of the distance, we fight because of isolation of communities, and uh, uh, culture, habits. Uh, very difficult to educate a mother uh, to give bananas, to give uh, mm. more vegetables to the children. Uh, made it difficult to convince a family that has buffaloes and goats and pigs because many have it, yeah. dozens and hundreds of and uh, they don't kill it regularly to give protein to the people. Uh, we are an island, half island, but hardly anyone eats fish. Uh, so, uh, so it's all about education. Is yes, but liter uh, literacy yeah. rate has gone up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's uh, gone up, but um, we have built uh, thousands of schools, but many still mm -hmm. poor condition, there is no water, no sanitation, and... Uh, so there, there's still yeah. plenty of homework yeah, for you plenty, today. Plenty. <laughs> we cannot choose neighbors, we can choose friends, but better that you have uh, neighbors who are also friends. And, uh, and Indonesia has been a great neighbor, a great friend. very quickly on the challenges of building a nation and getting people together, like you said, reconciliation. Yeah. Uh, so some of the, the challenges politically as well, because I'm thinking of you know, 2008 and the attempted assassination, and I'm particularly interested because my, my name you actually mentioned at one point. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. And then now I g come to see you, I go to your house, and I hardly see any form of security. Yeah. One, I'm totally against my presidential office, no armed security. The gates are open all the time, except at night. Uh, hundreds of children flock in every day to eat in the back of the presidency. There's a canteen there where Monday to Friday they have a proper meal, lunchtime. In the f uh, next week, or I think this week, we inaugurate a new swimming pool in the garden of the presidency for the children. That is a gift from the Chinese embassy, from the Chinese government. Uh, yeah, and the country is peaceful. Of course, with time to time, we have uh, youth uh, battles. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we still have it, not like 100%, but um, it's not like a war, it's not like a armed conflict. Uh, it is youth that fight each other, and sometimes uh, with uh, violence. The 2008 was different, right? Yeah, that was the 2006, uh, we had a major six. security problem. Uh, the 2008 was a, a spillover from mm -hmm. uh, the 2006 crisis. But since then, since then uh, the country has been absolutely uh, peaceful. Uh, that's one of the greatest achievements. We could have done you know, all the infrastructure we've done if we, the country was unstable, like in a state of civil war, or that would be, you know, that we succeeded. Uh, and I believe there is no turning back uh, on, on, on that. Uh, the continuing, the continuing, continuing challenge for us is precisely in uh, economic front. Now that this uh, is your second term as president, you know, as Ramali, I doing are you doing anything different from your previous not uh, much term? really except uh, that uh, I'm more vocal in advocating causes I'm more vocal on okay. child nutrition on mother's nutrition on education on health these are my main concerns but also I'm very uh, public advocating on streamlining bureaucracy to reduce bureaucracy and streamlining 
the laws, regulations to facilitate, encourage investments. Our bureaucracy is uh, one of the worst in the world. And uh, Prime Minister Shanana promises the next few weeks, few months to clean up the bureaucracy, to streamline the process, the procedures uh, to facilitate investors. What kind of things can investors find here? Well, as in? we join ASEAN, that is an absolute priority for us, membership in ASEAN, will be part of a regional market of almost 700 million people with high income. Uh, and because we are virgin territory for investors, Indonesia already plenty of national conglomerates. So any foreign uh, group go to Indonesia and they have to compete with the national conglomerates. It's totally natural. Or Malaysia, Thailand is the same. Timor-Leste is almost like the uh, virgin territory. So very tempting for new investors or other investors in Indonesia who want to capture also this. For what purpose? In tourism sector, we need to build hotels, airport, uh, a transition from uh, diesel uh, electricity to power energy. to green economy. Uh, telecommunication. Uh, uh, telecommunication, technology. yes. Uh, and, uh, and to, uh, to improve dramatically our connectivity. And we have an advantage is that we still use US dollar. Even though they talk about mm -hmm. uh, 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 regional uh, currencies and so on, I don't believe in that. Uh, and you prefer to keep the dollar yeah, we rather will than keep, the Timor, keep the dollar, peso, yes, or whatever. Yeah. And that facilitates investors, traders. Yeah. Okay, it was just one final question. 21 years on, you are still here, <laughs> you and yeah. Jenna. What about the future? Are you shaping the young people to basically succeed you? Yeah. Will well, we see new faces, young faces, well, uh, millennials uh, yeah. <laughs> running well, the country? Uh, in 2002, when we began, the people from the 75 generation, we are only five. So the doors, the windows, the avenues, the roads are open for the so-called new generation. The parliament, begin to then two, only the new generation were there. The government, almost 100% new generation. Only the prime minister, the president are not. But they all had a chance to prove themselves. Because the idea of shaping new generation, well, is uh, just a, a form of a speech. Because uh, you, on your own, you have to go and study. You have to work to prove yourself, to succeed by your own means. Because the conditions are there, the country is free. Mm -hmm. You can join politics, you can work in uh, the administration. And uh, if you're good, yeah, you will succeed, you will prevail. The question is, after 20 years, where is the new generation that is recognized nationally? If they are not, well, it's their fault. But they had a chance, 20 years, because many of them mm -hmm. have been in government uh, ever since. So that is a problem. That's also uh, a challenge. Uh, you have uh, to earn the trust of the electorate, you have to earn uh, the right uh, to be trusted to be, uh, and to run the country. It's to talking about the future, I can't let you go without asking this. We will be having our general election soon in Indonesia and some of that. Just, just your thoughts on, you know, our, particularly the presidential election coming up, especially some of the candidates you know <laughs> quite well. Just give me your, your well, uh, kind of thoughts. Uh, of course, I will not uh, say uh, who I favor because uh, it would be silly and uh, it would cause more problems than uh, good because it wouldn't influence one iota <laughs> in Indonesian opinion. But just, yeah, just, just but uh, thought, I would yeah. say anyone uh, in that Indonesian electorate people elect, obviously we have to work 
to reach out to him, to her, to continue this great relationship. But uh, I know that any other, any other candidate to win, uh, well, at least on our side, reach out to keep the same great relations or even expand more. We cannot choose neighbors. We can choose friends, but better that you have uh, neighbors who are also friends. And, uh, and Indonesia has been a great neighbor, a great friend. Australia has been a great friend, a great neighbor. So we are lucky the two closest mm -hmm. neighbors we have, Australia and Indonesia, are great friends. So in a way, your independence in 2002 actually improved the relationship between yeah. Indonesia exactly, and Timor-Leste. Yeah. Look at people. what Indonesia was before Timor independence and what it is today. Its, its views uh, is always solicited internationally, is respected uh, everywhere. Uh, its economy flourishing in the midst of the downturn worldwide. Uh, so Indonesia gained tremendously with democracy and with free itself from East Timor. Yeah, and we want to maintain Indonesia's democracy. Yes. Because this is something that we fought for in 1998. Exactly. Yeah. President Ramos Horta, thank you very thank much you, for Ivo. inviting me to this Ivo extremely Desi, insightful <laughs> conversation. And yeah. I'm glad to see that you're well. And I hope you thank continue you. thriving. And um, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to thank you. coming back again because I hear the whale sighting yes, please. here yeah. is incredible. Yeah. So many come. things to do, many things to see. Thank you. Once again, thank you very much, President Ramos Horta. Ya, demikian Inside with Desi Anwar kali ini. Jangan lupa Anda juga dapat menyaksikan acara ini di CNNIndonesia.com dan di... YouTube Insight with Desi Anwar sekali lagi. Terima kasih atas perhatian Anda, saya Desi Anwar. Sampai jumpa. Bye-bye.